Welcome back. Welcome to the closing keynote of Blog Her 15, which I'm going to subtitle, Women I Desperately Want to Be When I Grow Up. <laughs> Our first speaker this evening is my dear friend, an amazing entrepreneur, the CEO of Egami Consulting. Please help me welcome Tanisha Jackson Warner. So I am Tanisha Jackson Warner, CEO of Igami Consulting Group. Have you all been having a good time? I knew I was going to feel the energy, but man, I really feel the energy. So I'm excited to talk to you about defining moments. That's been the theme of the 10 by 10 presentation this year. So as you know, I would say defining moments are those moments that really shape who we are. Um, it's those moments when you meet your husband and or the moment when you become a mother. But let me hear from a couple of you. What would you say a defining moment is? Now, I've got, this has to have some order. Raise your hand and then I'll ask you. Okay, what would you say? Graduate from college. Moving to New York. Anybody else? You. Starting my own business. All right, so you all got it. Those are the moments that can shape who we are as individuals. Now, I also believe it's moments that shape who we are in the world. I think defining moments have the potential to shape the world. So imagine this. Imagine the moment Steve Jobs had the idea of, hmm, Perhaps I can create technology. And or the moment when Oprah Winfrey decided, I'm going to dedicate every platform to doing good in the world. Or better yet, can you all imagine this moment? Three women together, and they have a conversation that goes like this. You know what? We are tired of the technology industry saying that there are not enough women. And we think there are women in technology and we actually think we could call a conference blogger and women would actually come. Aren't you all glad that those three women had that defining moment, right? I'm really happy. And so that's what I mean when I say these moments can actually shape the world as we know it. As a matter of fact, I think as you go through life on a day-to-day -day basis, we're experiencing the byproduct of someone's defining moment. So if there was a combination behind defining moments, what would I say? I think it's a mixture of destiny plus faith plus the stretch. Now you all may be saying, well, what is the stretch? I know what destiny is, I know what faith is, but what is the stretch? In all of those examples that I just gave you, that could have just been a moment. What made it become defining is those individuals were willing to stretch when the moment was before them. And so what I want to do now is give you a definition of the stretch, because my challenge to you, blog her, is when you have a moment before you, be willing to stretch so that it can become defining. So here's how I would define the stretch. Mind you, this is Tanisha's definition and not Webster's, okay? <laughs> so the stretch is the distance between your comfort zone and your dream. It's the expansion that will be necessary and required of you to become the person you're destined to be. It's a willingness to never give up. And by the way, let me put this out there. It's a destination that is sometimes on the other side of normal. Are we all clear what the definition of the stretch is? All clear? All right. So I'll give you examples of moments in my life when they became defining because I was willing to stretch. I went to Alabama A&M University in college, and I chose, do I have an Alabama A&M graduate? All right. I didn't anticipate that. Woo, bulldog. Okay. 
So I do this all the time, and I never had a graduate in the audience, so I'm loving that. I'm going to give you a lot of energy, OK? <laughs> So I majored in computer science, and there was one determining factor behind that decision, and it was how much money can I make? That was it. And so I chose to major in computer science. I got a job at IBM Global Services, and I was there for about four years. And one day, sitting at my desk, there was a moment before me. I could do one or two things. I could continue down the corporate path of what was expected of me, because my grandmother reminded me every time she could that I had a good job. <laughs> or I could step on the other side of normal and decide to stretch and write this resignation letter, because that was the, the moment that I had this idea. I chose to stretch. I wrote my resignation letter, turned it in, and I left IBM Global Services. Now, at the moment I left IBM Global Services, I did not have another job. But I started to network quite often. And one day, I was at a conference just a few weeks after leaving, similar to this, and I was networking. And I tell you, networking becomes urgent when you don't have a job. <laughs> I was like very intentional. And as destiny would have it, I actually bumped into Mr. Russell Simmons. And for those of you all that don't know Russell Simmons, he's a business mogul. Some have called him the godfather of the hip hop movement, of pop culture. He started tons of businesses that have fueled entertainment and pop culture as we know it. So in that moment, I went up to Mr. Simmons and I said, Mr. Simmons, my name is Tanisha Jackson at that time. And I just left my corporate job. I have around four to five years of corporate experience and I'm willing to work for you for no fee in exchange for an opportunity to learn from you. So he gave me a number, and I tell you, I was so excited. I ran back to my hotel room, because I was at a conference like this, and for some reason, I thought Russell gave me his personal number. I don't know why. <laughs> but I dialed the number, and I'm waiting, and like, why wouldn't I just talk to him when I was in front of him, right? Why go back to the hotel to call his personal number? But needless to say, it was a fax number. And someone I knew, I was very upset when I found out it was a fax number. I said, oh, he played me. And I would pretty much tell anybody that listened that Russell Simmons played me. He gave me a fax number. <laughs> and at some point, I was challenged, well, you need to figure out a way to make that number work for you. So I dialed the number. And again, it was a fax number. I faxed Russell every single day for 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> And I heard absolutely nothing. <laughs> so I dialed 411 and asked the operator, can you tell me where this number is going? It was going to an address in New York City. I actually got a ticket, and I went to this address. And this address was Russell Simmons' office. And I was really excited. I went up. And you can imagine how this conversation went. I went to the receptionist. Hi, I'm Tanisha Jackson. I'm here to meet with Mr. Simmons. And you are? <laughs> well, I kind of sort of know him. We met at a conference, and I made him an offer. Needless to say, that did not go well. <laughs> Ma'am, Russell does not meet with strangers, is pretty much what the receptionist said. But as destiny would have it, as I was walking out, Mr. Simmons was walking in. So I went up to him, Mr. Simmons, do you remember me? It's Tanisha Jackson. He said, yes. What the hell are you doing at my office? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I was in the city, wink. <laughs> and I decided to come over and make that offer to you one more time. I'm noticing you doing a lot of deals with corporate brands. I have four to five years of experience, and I'm willing to work for no fee. Well, on this particular day, Russell introduced me to his CEO, and I definitely thought, Something's going to come of this moment. It didn't. <laughs> so go back. I go back to Minneapolis, and I'm in Minneapolis, and my dream is in New York. I have yet another moment before me. Do I stay or do I go? I chose to stretch yet again. I moved to New York, and I knew one person at the time, and that was Mr. Russell Simmons. <laughs> What it was 
a good person to know, right? <laughs> so I come to New York City and just say, I started to do things to try and increase the chances of me running into Russell again. I started to practice yoga where he practiced yoga. I started to go to Rev Ron's church. Now, I know what's going on in your mind right now. I know the conversation. You all are thinking, this story is starting to take a bit of a stalker turn. <laughs> that's what you're thinking in the inside. And I tell you, that's what everybody around me was saying. Like, this is getting a bit odd. So I'm in New York, and I do not get a chance to run into Russell again. However, I find out Russell is speaking at an entrepreneur conference in Miami. <laughs> I see the faces. Off to Miami, I went. And I sat in a crowd similar to this, and Mr. Simmons was actually up doing a keynote. And as destiny would have it, Russell stops doing the keynote. And I'm sure whomever hired Russell in that moment was like, what is he doing? But he just got tired of speaking. And he said, let's make this Q&A. Let's make it. Does anybody have a question for me? I'm like, this is juicy now. So I take advantage of this opportunity. I raise my hand. Oh, I hope they call on me. Oh, I hope they call on me. And they did. And so I said, Mr. Simmons, I want to tell you the story of a girl with a dream. And I want you to tell me if she's totally crazy or if she deserves a chance. And I started to tell him the story in reverse. She chose a career based on earning potential. She's passionate about urban culture and hip hop. She met someone she wanted to learn from. She went to that person's office. <laughs> By this time, Russell leans in. <laughs> he squints his eyes. And he said, oh, shit, it's you again. <laughs> Yes. And I said, yes, Mr. Simmons, it, it's me again. And I, I knew you were speaking. And I just decided to come one more time to make you that offer. Five years, corporate experience. You're doing deals. I'm willing to work for no fee. What do you have to lose? And at this point, I held my breath, like, it, this is it. <laughs> and he said, you know, I've given chances over the years. And sometimes individuals do something with that chance. And sometimes they do absolutely nothing with it. He said, I am so curious to see which one you're going to be. Show up at my office on Monday morning and remember you're working for no fee. <laughs> and that's my story, or at least a piece of the story of defining moments that have led me to where I am today. So here's the lesson that I want to leave you with, blogger. I truly believe that defining moments are at our fingertips on a day-to-day -day basis. But your willingness to stretch is what have those moments become defining. I started working with Russell on November 17th. One year to that day, I became general manager of Rush Communications, his company. Now, I could have remained comfortable and stopped at that time, but I decided to stretch after a few years again, and I started my own company, Igami Consulting Group. I could have remained comfortable again, but no, I decided to stretch and become an author. I could have remained comfortable again, and I decided to stretch and start a conference called The Dream Project to inspire others to follow their dreams. The point that I want you to know is, the moments will be before you, but your willingness to stretch is what will have them become defining. And you can remember these steps right here. Seek your truth, which is what the S stands for. T, be willing to test and learn. That was a trial coming to New York. Run towards your dreams. Expand your thinking. My grandmother still reminds me IBM was a good job. Take risk, commit to your success, and know that your defining moments are not just about you. The defining moment that the founders of Blogger had are now helping others. So be willing to help others. So thank you, Blogger. I look forward to having you stretch. Tanisha Jackson Warner, my dear friend.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. She's amazing, isn't she? Thank you, Tanisha.